Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining me today. My name is Lily, and I'm so happy that you are here with me today. In today's video, I am going to alter some guest checks. So if you would like to play along, grab some guest checks or grab some tags or just cut down some pieces of paper in about a four by six size. Whatever you have, let's play along. And I'm also going to use paper scraps because if you're a paper crafter like I am, we have a never ending supply of paper scraps. So I'm going to use what I have and I'm going to cut random shapes and sizes so that I can build my focal point on my guest checks. I'm also going to create a background on the guest check and I'm going to use a Wendy Vecchi brick background stamp and it's going to look amazing. And then I also pulled some big chat stickers from the Tim Holtz collection and these are great for adding little phrases. But whatever you have, any word stickers will do or you can write your own as well. So this is a great opportunity to get creative but the main thing we want to do is use up our paper scraps and, and use some of those guest checks. And I have plenty of guest checks and so I want to create on them. I have been stamping on them lately, but I wanted to do a little bit more than just a stamped image. I wanted to get creative, messy, and a little bit of mixed media on these guest checks. So you can see right now, I am just pulling random bits of paper scraps and I'm going to cut down rectangular shapes and also triangles. So the larger rectangular uh, pieces are going to be the body of my little house. So my focal point is a little house. So that is what I'm going to create and I'm not going to overthink it. My rectangles and my squares and my, my triangles are going to be completely wonky. I am not here to create the perfect house, you guys. I am not an architect. <laughs> I'm here to paper piece and use it my scraps. And I'm okay if it looks a little bit wonky. And if it's somewhat whimsical, I think they turn, they turn out really cute. And if you're playing along, if you're crafting along with me, you're going to see that at the very end, they, it's all going to come together and you're going to have a really cute piece of art. Okay. So now I'm just cutting down all of my pieces. I'm just showing you um, that I'm not putting too much thought and I'm just kind of grabbing from the paper scraps. But once I start assembling my little house, I will make sure that they are harmonious and that all of the little pieces make sense and are cohesive. Um, I, do, I don't mind that they're a little bit wonky, but I do want the colors to blend and work well together. Okay, so I'm just cutting the random pieces and I'm going to set those aside for just a moment so that I can go ahead and create the background, the stamped background on the guest check. Now that is completely optional. I was looking for maybe a polka dotted background, something that wasn't so linear because the guest check already has those lines, the vertical and the horizontal lines. I was looking something for something that would that would work uh, in contrast to those linear uh, to those lines. But I didn't want to dig deep because then I get sidetracked and all of a sudden I'm doing something completely different. So I went for this brick background and, and it works well. It, it, in fact, it blends really well because, you know, it's like a play on the whole um, aesthetic of it, the bricks and the house. So it kind of works well together. Okay, still cutting pieces. I thought I would be done by now and kind of move them over to the side, but... <laughs> I'm just cutting paper. So I, I found another bag. I pulled another bag of scraps and those were actually my Christmas scraps. So what happens is, going back to the paper scrap storage, I work on projects and once I'm done with my projects, I put all of those similar papers in a baggie. So I have a baggie that has 
Christmas related papers. And then I have another one that has specialty paper like glitter and gold foil. And then I have another bag that has more vibrant and primary color um, and printed papers. And then I have a fourth bag. I know you guys, it's crazy with nothing but colored cardstock. So it's a crazy mess, but it makes sense to me. <laughs> okay. So I did do a few off camera and I was playing around with different colored inks. I used um, some pinks, reds, and then different shades of brown. And I also used this one that I really liked. This one is called Rusty Hinge and it's a Tim Holtz Distress Ink and it looks great on the background. They all look great, but I really wanted to use this one. I wanted it to be somewhat subtle so that it falls into the background, hence background. <laughs> and so you'll notice on this first one that once I lift the ink, it's really subtle, but I wanted to bring a little bit. I know I said I wanted it to be in the background, but I want it to be <laughs> a little more visible than that. So I sprayed, I didn't re-ink the stamp. I just misted it. One mist of water onto the stamp and then press down my guest check again. And now when I lift it, that's pretty cool. It brings out a lot more of that color, but it also looks even more distressed because of the spritz of water. And I'm going to do a third one, and believe it or not, it is going to pick up more of that rusty hinge color onto the guest check. And again, I did do another little spritz of water I'm going to spritz it one more time, just one very light spritz. And I'm going to see if I can pull a fourth, a fourth one up. And I can't remember if it works well or not, but let's see. Let's play. I've been playing with my supplies a lot just to see what happens. Oh my gosh, it did. It worked. And I'm sure I could probably pick up a fifth one, um, but I'm going to put it away or I could be stamping all day long, you guys. When I start creating embellishments for my junk journals, I mass make. So I make tons of things. So I will sit at my craft table and I could easily go through an entire booklet of the guest checks just playing with backgrounds. So, and that's what I've been doing, kind of playing and experimenting um, to see how things turn out. And if it doesn't work out, well, then I learned my lesson and we can move on to something else. Okay, this is the fun part. So now that we have our guest checks and the background, now it's time to paper piece these cute little houses. And I'm going to take my, just my pieces and kind of coordinating and bringing them all together. And if you guys have watched or let me start over. I invite you to go watch my whimsical envelope little house pockets, you guys. That is where I got started on making whimsical houses. But instead of using guest checks, I used a an envelope, a number 10 envelope. And I also used window envelopes and just business reply envelopes. But that turned out to be so much fun because what I did is I took a plain envelope and created these super cute whimsical houses by paper piecing and they turned out so nice. I am going to link that video in the description uh, below so that you can go take a look at it. Also, if you forget to look in the description area, always know that you can go to my homepage, to my YouTube channel homepage just click on my name and it'll take you to my my landing page and there you'll see some of my most popular videos and I believe the little the little house pocket video is like number two at the moment but the one that's number two is not the whimsical one it is the Christmas one which is you know the whimsical little Christmas houses. Anyway, I've got tons of those videos, you guys. And that's how all of this got started. And I've seen so many other creators as well create things by putting papers together, 
like I think it was Natasha from Treasure Books, she created tags by just using larger pieces of paper and just kind of gluing them together and they're, and making them look a, a little bit wonky, but they worked. So she was working on that. And I've seen other creators do um, paper piecing as well and create other things. So there's so many things that you can do with your scraps by just cutting down your shapes and just building things almost like you would with, uh, with Legos. <laughs> it's like building, right? Except we're using paper. So I cut down a door, I did a little window, and I'm also going to add a little chimney. And it's not gonna come together until the very end, and you'll see what I'm talking about at the end. Right now, the papers, they don't look, they, they, they still need the final details because right now it just looks like little pieces of paper just kind of floating on the on the page but we are going to bring it in we're going to bring it all together and it is going to look absolutely great see the first one there my sample do you see how all around the perimeter of of the little house I've taken a black pen and I just emphasized each and every shape the little triangle which is the roof, and then I lined it. The same thing with the chimney. And then I also added like a little awning strip, and I went over that with pen. So I did that to all the pieces, and that really helps bring it all together, you guys. Oh, let me point something out really quick, which is so funny. That mini glue bottle that you are seeing on the upper part of the screen is a cocktail of glue, you guys. So it is not the Ranger multi matte medium. Mm -mm. It was an empty bottle and I just repurposed it. And it started out with, I, I needed a bottle with a fine tip. <laughs> and at the time I didn't have one. And so I grabbed, <laughs> I took the empty bottle and I washed it out and I added, I think it was Elmer's glue. But then it was too watery. And so that wasn't going to work because Elmer's glue is fine, but on thinner papers, it curls the paper. So it was too, too, too watered, too watery. So then, but I used some of it up and then I added tacky glue because Aileen's tacky glue, as, as the name says, it's tacky and it's a thicker glue than the Elmer's. So then I added tacky glue in there to kind of thicken up the Elmer's that was in there. <laughs> but the Elmer's glue won, and so it was still really, really, really watery. Plus, it was hard to get the tacky glue into that little bottle without making a huge mess. So then I added art glitter glue in there, you guys. So, and who knows what else is in there? So there are three or four different, different glue, uh, glues in there. That's why I'm calling it my little cocktail, my glue cocktail mini bottle. And it works... It's okay, but it is a hodgepodge of glues in there. Here's the thing. I don't want to buy any more glue until I use up every last drop that I have. And I've mentioned that in the past. So I'm, I'm out of my art glitter glue and I'm also out of my Fabri-Tac. And let's see, I have, I did find some bottles of tacky glue so I'm going through that now what I did buy just recently was crafters pick ultimate glue and the reason I did that is because I needed a glue that would stick metal and plastic embellishments on my projects and that one worked really well so that is the exception plus it was cheaper than Fabri-Tac or the um the beacon three three in one glue so it worked out well. And then what else did I do? Oh, and then I bought a fabric glue. I did buy a fabric glue, you guys, because I needed glue for my fabric. And again, that is the same brand as the Ultimate Glue by Crafters Pick. So those are the two exceptions, the fabric glue and the um, Ultimate Glue. But my favorite glue is the Art Glitter Glue and, of course, the Fabri-Tac or the 3-in-1. 
but I'm not going to buy any of those until I go through every single bottle of tacky glue that I still have left. Okay. <laughs> so if I have to make cocktails to glue my papers down, that is what I'm going to do. And it's working. So you'll see how I'm switching from glue stick to my little cocktail. And then I think I even pull the tacky glue. Tacky glue works great on heavier cardstock pieces because it really holds it down. It holds on thinner. It, it works well on thinner pa papers as well. But I'm using it for the heavier cardstock pieces because that other cocktail, because it's kind of watery, it, was, it wasn't completely sticking it down. It was kind of curling up in the ends. And so the cocktail glue I'm using for lightweight pieces of paper. Yes, I know. I'm all over the place when it comes to glue, but <laughs> I'm reaching for whatever is on my desk, you guys. Oh my gosh. If I were to zoom out, my desk is crazy, you guys, crazy. And the reason is I was working on paper piecing these houses off camera. And so you know what it's like when you start cutting paper. It gets all over the place. My craft area is a, what is it, a six foot like standard folding table. That's what I use as my craft table. But I have craft creep big time. And so I'm only able to work on this little 12 by 12, we are mem memory keepers glass mat. Everything else, nothing else fits. Can you believe I was drinking my cup of coffee this morning as I was working on this project? And when I sat at my table, I kid you not, I didn't have an area to set down my coffee cup. And I thought, that is ridiculous. <laughs> so before I got to crafting, and creating and making things, I had to clear up an area where my coffee cup could live for a little while. Yeah. So, yes. But I can't get too caught up in organizing because then that's all I will do. So if I focus too much on the organizing and the cleaning up, then I'll get sidetracked and I will never start creating. So I just made enough room for my coffee cup so that I could sit down and make. Did I tell you guys that I have separated my workspace? So a while ago, in one of my videos from last summer, I kind of gave you um, a look to my setup, the way my tables are set up. And I used to craft and work all on the same table. That was insane, you guys. So on that folding table, I had my desktop computer, which I use for all of my real estate work. And then on the right-hand side of the table is where I was creating and making and filming my YouTube videos. When I'm working and making paper crafts, I could have stuff all over the place. I love it. The paper, the glue, the scissors, the, the, scissors, the cutters, the punches, the dies, the big shot, everything I could have, I could be surrounded by it. And the more I have, the more, the more creative I become. But when I'm working on real estate, you guys, and I know I've mentioned this in the past, if I have, I like to work on an empty and a clear desk. If there is anything that is not work related on my desk, I get overstimulated and I can't focus and I get really flustered. And so I was noticing that when I was working on real estate, because my table wasn't clear, I couldn't concentrate and I couldn't fo focus. So one day I disconnected my desktop. I grabbed a small table that I had and I made area in my bedroom where I now have a small desk, my desktop, and that is it. So anything that is work related um, to my to my other work, because I consider my, my YouTube and my crafting part of my work. It used to be a hobby, you guys, but, but it's no longer just a hobby. It is something that I also dedicate a lot of time to because I absolutely love it. But I also love my real estate. Did you all know that I'm a realtor? I am. I'm a real estate agent. And so now I have a designated an area, a nice quiet area in front of my bedroom window where I can concentrate and work on my real estate without 
being overly stimulated and it works for me. Yes. So now I have two separate areas. Okay. Whew. I hope you don't mind chatty videos. This is a pen, it's called R2, and I picked it up at the Dollar Tree, and it is lovely. It is so, it's so black, it is so smooth, and it's a really good pen. Cost me $1.25, so, and I really, really like it. So now I'm gonna take that black pen, any black pen you have, and all we're going to do, like I mentioned earlier, is we are going to outline each and every little paper piece. Because right now, the little houses, they look unfinished. And so by doing this black outline, it's going to bring it all together. And it's going to look complete. And it's going to look finished. So just going around, and you can go around it as many times as you want. I think white pen would also look nice, especially on the darker, the darker colored paper pieces. A white pen would look nice, even a gold pen, but black, black is great. So we're just gonna outline. Now, these are all freshly glued down. It is best if you wait until all of your pieces are completely dry from the glue. Because I used wet glue, if you press too hard with your pen, you're gonna cut right through it because the paper is wet from the glue. And so I'm being very gentle with my pen, making sure that I don't, you know, pierce the paper with, my, with the pen. So I just, that's just a little tip. Wait until it completely dries before you go in and make the little doodles. But for the sake of the video, I, I want to show you what it looks like completed. That little house right there is made of the body of it. Those are that script paper. I made that. That's my own little writing. And I did and years, of, years and years ago, maybe like five or six years ago, I wrote down the lyrics to my favorite song and then I scanned it and then I shrunk it and I printed it. And that's what that is. So that little piece of paper was in my scraps. Nice, fine, that little thing is six years old. Hello, <laughs> so cute. So just an idea, if you don't have a script stamp, you could always do your own handwriting to give it, um, to create a background look. On the chimney there, I added a little zigzag line just to give that chimney a little character. These turned out so cute, you guys. Another idea I had was to line the back of the guest check so that you can use these as a journaling spot because on the back, it, they did get inky and there, you know, there's, there's some ink stain on it, possibly some paint from other projects I've been working on. It doesn't bother me because these are like mixed media and it shows that they are handmade and hand created. But if you are creating these to use as junk, as a journaling cards, you could just journal over the back of them. And I, I never flip it over so you could see the back. Um, but they're just, they're just plain, but you could also line it if you want to with, with more paper. It'll also make it much sturdier. But you'd be surprised. These little guest checks, they they're they have a pretty good weight to them. I can't tell you what weight they are, but they're not thin like copy paper. They're almost like a mixed media paper. Yeah, these are pretty thick. So, so they really hold up all of that wet media. And by the way, in the future, in the future, I have another video where I'm going to I'm going to alter some other guest checks. So. Subscribe, subscribe to my YouTube channel, you guys. I would love to have you here, especially if you wanna see more of this type of video or um, I'm all over the place too when it comes to paper crafts. I work on all kinds of different random things, all paper craft related, um, but right now I'm on a guest checked kick and so the next video will also be altered guest checks 
and uh, I think you'll enjoy that one. So subscribe to my channel and then click that little notification bell so that you're notified next time I upload a video. I would greatly appreciate that. And if you like this video, give me a thumbs up. If you love it, share it with your friends. Yay! Let me know what you think down below. I would greatly appreciate it. So now I am going to grab some of these little, not little, they're the big chat stickers from, from Tim Holtz. And I'm just randomly selecting a few words. Any words, they all, they all make sense. Like you can create your own phrases. They can be short or they can be long. Or you can grab a single word. And it's still going to look amazing. It brings everything. It finishes, doesn't it? Not, aside from the the detail the black line around the house and that brought it together but once you add words to it that gives that gives a little these guest checks a lot more character and now they have meaning do you know what i mean i love these so much <laughs> now notice how i didn't use plain paper I, that was intentional. I intentionally used patterned paper for all of my little houses because they just look a lot, they're more um, aesthetically pleasing to the eye. Now I did use a blue door that was, a, that was solid color and that was okay. But for the most part, I only wanted to use patterned paper and they all work so well together. But if all you have is plain paper, you could also run it through with an embosser to kind of give it some texture. Or you could stamp on the pieces of plain paper to give it a pattern. There's so many things we can do, you guys. So many things. This is just one of the ideas. I sure hope that this brings you inspiration so that you can create your own tags or cards or guest checks or journaling cards, whatever it is that you want to make. I hope that this inspires you to make something. I think it'll be awesome. They're going to turn out amazing. The next thing we're going to do is I am going to add some ink to the edges. Completely optional. I actually thought about just leaving some of them the way they are. But after looking at the first one that I created, I really like the way the ink blending, the ink stain looks around the edges. So I'm just going to quickly go around it. Because I am working on a folding table, it shakes a little bit. And I try to be really, and I try to be careful and mindful of that. So I'm kind of going easy on that so that I don't, I don't shake it too bad. I'm just doing side by side so you could see how um, different they look, but they still look amazing. Completely optional. Not everything has to be distressed. It's okay to have white space. <laughs> Sometimes though I do get carried away and I want to ink up all the edges on everything. And then there's other times where I don't use my blending tool at all. So these journaling tags, are going to be included in some new junk journals that I am working on. And so right now I am creating a ton of junk journal embellishments to put inside those junk journals. And those junk journals are almost done. I have, I've, have completed the covers and I have completed the signatures and I have done some stamping on a lot of the signature pages. So now I just need to add the signatures, bind them down to the spine. And then the fun part is to add all of these beautiful embellishments to the pages. So I'm hoping to be done with, uh, with a few that I'm working on right now, hopefully within the next week or so, so that I can have a flip through for you. I thought I was done. I really did think I was done. But then I looked over and I noticed that I had the Heidi Swap Gold Shine on my desk. And I thought, let's just go ahead and use it. I love this stuff, you guys. I don't think it's available anymore. 
but you can use whatever spray, whatever shine you have. I know there's a lot of other brands out there and I can't get the bottle open anymore. It is tight because I used to use a little wand and just kind of make splatters, but because I can't take the cap off and do that, I am going to spray it, but I'm only pressing that nozzle, the nozzle a little ways down because I want more droplets than the actual spray. So I'm, and I'm being intentional as to where I want those gold um, splatters to be. But that's what it needed. I love it. You're going to see how beautiful they look. I'm going to put them on this white background so that you could see clearly how they are turning out. Look at them, you guys. Aren't they gorgeous? From scraps of paper and a plain gas check. I love how they turned out and I hope you guys enjoyed it. Thank you so much for being here with me and I hope that you are here for the next one that I make for Altered Guest Checks. We're going to have so much fun again. You guys take care and I will see you next time. Thank you. Bye.